Sports Mix Rise Reshapes the Landscape Why Samsung is Losing the Number 2 Spot The global chip foundry world is about to undergo a seismic shift. Can you believe it? SMIC, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, despite continuous technical blockades from Europe and the US, is actually poised to drag the former industry giant Samsung down from its horse and snatch the throne of global number two? You have to realize, just three years ago, Samsung's foundry revenue was more than double that of SMIC. Now, the gap has narrowed to less than $800 million. This counterattack is simply mind-blowing. Is Samsung losing its touch, or is SMIC hiding a secret weapon? Actually, Many people don't understand that the chip foundry industry is not a solo show for advanced process nodes. To put it in plain English, advanced processes like 3 nanometers and 2 nanometers are like the luxury goods of the chip world, pursuing extreme performance but with low yields and high costs. Meanwhile, mature processes like 28 nanometers and 40 nanometers are essential daily goods, chips for cars, home appliances, and IoT devices rely entirely on them, high volume, broad coverage, and guaranteed profits. SMIC sees the opportunity of this mature process boom to achieve this overtaking maneuver. It turns out this is the core code to its rise. What overturns perception even more is that the chip autonomy plans heavily funded by Europe and the US have turned into a god tier assist for SMIC. The US threw $52.7 billion into the CHIPS Act, Yet TSMC's U.S. factory lost 40 billion NTD in four years, and Intel's foundry business has suffered continuous losses. The EU invested 43 billion euros, but core factories won't start production until 2026. In contrast, relying on massive domestic market demand, SMIC frantically expanded mature process capacity. By the first half of 2025, the chip's self-sufficiency rate had already rushed to 50%. This contrast maximizes the suspense of the global chip landscape. Next, let's dig into whether SMIC can truly surpass Samsung to secure the number two spot. In the route battle between advanced and mature processes, who represents the future? Under geopolitics, how will the global chip supply chain be reconstructed? The landscape shifts. SMIC chases Samsung closely while U.S. and European factories dragging their feet becomes a key variable. The global wafer foundry data for Q3 2025 pushed the suspense of the industry landscape to its peak. According to the latest TrendForce report, Samsung's Q3 foundry revenue was $3.18 billion, basically flat year over year, while SMIC's revenue was $2.38 billion, a surge of 7.8%. The gap between the two has narrowed to $800 million, the smallest in a decade. More critically, SMIC's growth momentum is unstoppable, with mature process capacity utilization remaining high. Meanwhile, Samsung is suffering on both ends, abysmal yields on advanced processes and pressure from SMIC on mature processes. Comparing the performance of European and American peers highlights the significance of SMIC's rise. The U.S. spent $52.7 billion on the Chips and Science Act, intending to revitalize the domestic semiconductor industry, but three years later, it has become a joke. TSMC's factory in Arizona, originally scheduled for production in 2024, has been pushed to the first half of 2025, facing labor shortages and cost overruns, with cumulative losses approaching 40 billion NTD over four years. Intel took huge subsidies but announced layoffs of 15,000 people in 2025, with its foundry business losing money continuously. Q3 operating losses hit $2.321 billion. Even an ally like Nvidia dares not give it orders. The EU's Chips Act isn't doing much better. Despite sinking 43 billion euros, the key Infineon Dresden factory won't start production until 2026. Even then, it will focus on automotive-grade mature processes, missing the current market dividend. Conversely, SMIC, relying on the massive domestic demand for new energy vehicles and home appliances, has frantically expanded capacity for 28 nanometers and above mature processes. In the first half of 2025, the chip's self-sufficiency rate reached 50%, and the export share rose by 15%, 
carving a bloody path through European and American restrictions. This set of data and cases thoroughly overturns the inherent perception of Western dominance in chip manufacturing. The drastic narrowing of the gap between SMIC and Samsung is not due to technical breakthroughs, but rather seizing the rigid demand of the mature process market, combined with a complete domestic supply chain and massive domestic demand to form a scale advantage. The failure of Western chip acts exposes their shortcomings, industrial hollowing out, labor shortages, and rigid policies. This proves that chip manufacturing cannot be solved just by throwing money at it. The maturity of the industrial ecosystem is key. SMIC's rise is not accidental but the inevitable result of the global chip industry returning from advanced process worship to pragmatism. In the next six months, as SMIC's new capacity is released, the probability of overtaking Samsung to become global number two is extremely high. The Battle of Routes TSMC monopolizes advanced processes, Samsung's dilemma and the West's pragmatic choice. In the technological route of chip manufacturing, a clear divergence has emerged. TSMC has gone all in on advanced processes, becoming the absolute hegemon. Samsung tries to chase advanced processes while defending mature ones, ending up suffering on both sides. While SMIC and some Western companies have chosen to focus on mature processes and specialty technologies, carving out a different track. This divergence is redefining the rules of global chip competition. TSMC's advanced processes have reached a monopoly level. In Q3 2025, TSMC's 3 nanometers revenue share rose to 23%, with monthly capacity breaking 100,000 wafers, rising to 160,000 in 2026, and yields exceeding 80%. Even more ruthless is that TSMC has begun preparing for 2 nanometers mass production and plans to raise advanced process prices by 3 to 5% over the next 4 years. Even so, big customers like Apple and Nvidia are fighting for orders. Advanced processes have become TSMC's money tree. In contrast, Samsung, in order to chase advanced processes, launched the world's first 3 nanometers graphic technology, but the yield was atrociously low only around 20%, and transistor density was worse than TSMC's 5 nanometers. Even loyal fan Qualcomm switched orders to TSMC. Advanced processes have become a losing business for Samsung. Even more awkward is that Samsung is being squeezed by SMIC in mature processes. Its mature process capacity utilization was less than 70% in Q3 2025, while SMICs remained above 90%. This dilemma caused Samsung's foundry share to drop from 20% to 6.8%, with SMIC closing in step by step. Western companies have seen the reality and started to abandon the fantasy of fully catching up with advanced processes, turning to differentiated competition in specialty technologies and mature processes. For example, Infineon, heavily supported by the EU, focuses on automotive grade chips. Its Dresden factory will mainly produce power semiconductors for cars, which is a high-value-added area within mature processes. The Semiconductor Industry Association, SI, once boasted that by 2032, the U.S. share of advanced chips would reach 28%, 10 times that of mainland China. But the reality is that Intel's 18A advanced process is currently only for self-production and self-consumption, with no external customers. Even the bound partner NVIDIA is only continuing to evaluate and dares not place real orders. This awkwardness of advanced process self-amusement precisely illustrates that advanced processes are not for everyone. Without sufficient technical accumulation and customer trust, blind pursuit will only lead to losses. Geopolitical games Under supply chain restructuring SMIC's rise becomes a weather vane for global industrial chain shifts. The competition in the global chip industry has long ceased to be just about technology and markets. It is a game of geopolitics and supply chain security. Against the backdrop of the U.S. push for supply chain decoupling, countries are accelerating the construction of local chip capacity. Mature processes, because they involve key areas like automobiles, home appliances, and national defense have become the core battlefield. 
SMIC's rapid expansion is not only an important result of China's chip autonomy strategy, but also a focal point for observing global industrial change shifts. To contain the development of China's chip industry, the U.S. issued an advanced equipment ban in October 2022, attempting to cut off SMIC's path to advanced process R&D. Unexpectedly, this forced SMIC to focus on mature processes, forming a pattern of You restrict yours, I develop mine. Interestingly, U.S. restrictions also hurt its own side. TSMC, in complying with U.S. export controls, adjusted its supply chain, resulting in a trial production yield of only 70% for 5 nanometers at its Arizona factory, far lower than its Taiwan factories. Samsung also saw its Texas factory investment shrink and project progress delayed due to U.S. equipment restrictions. The EU has taken a different path. Instead of engaging in technological blockades, like the U.S., it emphasizes win-win cooperation. Since Macron's visit to China in 2023, there has been a push in Europe to reduce dependence on the U.S., and Chinese companies have even been invited to participate in some chip R&D projects. The EU Chips Act approved several joint projects with private investments exceeding 20 billion euros, focusing on boosting mature process capacity to fill market gaps. This pragmatic attitude has allowed the EU to occupy a favorable position in global supply chain restructuring, securing its own supply chain without missing out on opportunities in the Chinese market.